Coming up on HIGMT, Tesla delivery times are back up in a big way. Ryan Shaw gives his impressions of his Model Y after one year. And cyber living with a Cybertruck might actually be a thing. Welcome to How I Got My Tesla, the podcast of Indeterminate Link for Saturday, March 13th, 2021, episode 33 in Ottawa, Ontario. I'm Matt Wilson. Let's start off with a few Tesla things you should know. Despite getting into a pretty big fender bender last January, Tesserati.com has noted that the fleet of taxi cabs using Model 3s in New York City appears to be growing. I will include links to the article in the show notes below, including pictures of the damaged Model 3. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> the Model 3 driver, Rami, noted that there is some confusion for customers when the taxi rolls up, mainly due to the flush-mounted door handles, but that confusion is quickly offsetted. Offsetted. Is that a word? <laughs> sure. Uh, that confusion is quickly offsetted by the attention the yellow Model 3 gets. People seem to love taking pictures of the yellow Model 3 when it arrives. Lots of information coming out of Tesla's factory in Fremont regarding the newly refreshed Model S. Tesserati.com noted that at least 30 Model S's were spotted, some equipped with traditional steering wheels, while others with the new steering yoke. They seem to think that the traditional steering wheel is limited to the dual motor long range trim level, while the steering yoke is set aside for the Plaid and Plaid Plus variant. I suspect that these first initial batches of the Model S's are actually slated for Tesla's showrooms and not potential customers, especially since the steering yoke is currently being evaluated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Updated delivery times on Tesla's own configuration page showed that deliveries for the Model S are now being pushed from 4 to 11 weeks to now 10 to 14 weeks, even though retooling of the production lines for both the Model S and Model X are just about complete. And finally, according to recent drone footage from YouTuber Gay Binical, over Fremont, there appears to be another unadvertised variant of the Model S. This would be the seven-seat option with a third row of seating facing forward, much in the same way that the third row seating is available for the Model Y. Tesserati.com and InsideEVs.com have uh, provided us pictures and videos of the new Model S at Fremont, so feel free to check out the links in the show notes below. And the bump up in delivery times is not only an issue for the Model S, both the Model 3 and Model Y are experiencing longer delivery times according to Tesserati.com and Tesla's own configuration page. The normal 2 to 5 weeks has now been pushed to 7 to 11 weeks and here in Canada both the Model 3 and Model Y have delivery times anywhere between 1 and 14 weeks. 1 to 14 weeks. You might as well just tell us you'll get it when you get it. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of those types of delivery schedules. It's really a toss up these days until Gigafactory Texas starts cranking out vehicles. It was just last week when I know that Tesla was delivering Model 3s with a delivery time of two to four weeks. It speculated that the extended delivery times could be a product of the expansion plan at Fremont and a worldwide semiconductor and chip shortage that is plaguing the entire automotive industry. Additionally, Tesla might have a huge backlog of orders from the recent end of quarter push, which is, I suppose is a good problem to have if you happen to be Tesla. As they say, easy come, easy go, and no sooner than Tesla announced a price drop for their vehicle fleet just a few weeks ago, it appears that Tesla has raised the prices of three of their four vehicles in their lineup, leaving only the Model X price unchanged. Seeing that's the roadshow has the details, but to summarize, the Model S Plaid Plus will set you back an additional $10,000. For the Model Y Long Range, there is a price increase of $1,000. And for the Model 3 Standard Range Plus and the Long Range, each of these have an increase of $500. No word on the reasoning for the price increases, but for those who have been watching Tesla for some time, this isn't anything new. And for those curious about the price increases in Canada, as of this recording, only the Model S Plaid Plus has seen the same $10,000 price increase. It's been a year since Tesla released a Model Y to the general public, and YouTuber Ryan Shaw is giving us a look at what has transpired over the past year since receiving his very own Model Y. InsideEVs.com has a story and a link to Ryan's video after driving 16,000 miles over the past year. Ryan goes into great detail about his Model Y, including using the Tesla app to lock and unlock the Model Y via Bluetooth and navigating around the infotainment screen. He also goes into the ride quality and the autopilot feature. So rather than having me summarize Ryan's great video, which happens to be about 24 minutes long, I really suggest that you go check it out. It's a comprehensive and a great resource for those of us who have yet to decide on which Tesla is right for you. And actually, that reminds me, I need to subscribe to Ryan's channel. Looks like we're going to get some news about the Cybertruck in the second quarter of 2021, thanks to a recent tweet from Elon Musk. 
But even before the Cybertruck is even released to the 700,000 plus prospective buyers, Gigafactory Texas need, actually needs to be finished. And at last check, there's a crap ton of work that needs to be done on site. Elon also mentioned that the idea of living off the Cybertruck platform would be achievable, especially if you decide to tow an RV or even a tiny house. Tesseraudi.com goes further into the idea of living off the grid by looking at plans from Carl Giesland. Carl and his wife are already living off the grid, and Carl thinks that he will be able to live quite comfortably off the Cybertruck's battery for hundreds of days. Karen Energy Research Advisors recently took a look at the cost per kilowatt hour Tesla is spending on their own battery packs and compared Tesla to other traditional automobile manufacturers who are just getting into the EV space. TeslaRadi.com and Electric.co have the specifics, but in general terms, Tesla is paying an average of $142 per kilowatt hour for the battery cells from Panasonic, LG Chem, and CATL. GM is paying about $169 per kilowatt hour, while the industry average is about $186 per kilowatt hour, according to Karen's report. It should be noted that the cost of in-house production by Tesla is quite a bit higher at $187 per kilowatt hour, so Tesla relies on their partners to keep the cost as low as possible. With the advent of the new 4680 battery cells, Tesla is hoping to lower the in-house cost per kilowatt hour from $187 to under $100 by utilizing better manufacturing processes and using more affordable materials. And we might as well take a look at Gigafactory Texas, and thanks again to Joe Tegmeyer and Jeff Roberts for the daily drone footage. Based on the drone footage provided, it would appear that Tesla has again moved to working 24-7 at the Gigafactory, with large portable lights being brought in for both the outside and inside of the facility. In Joe Tegmeyer's March 12th video, he goes into some details regarding the upcoming battery cell manufacturing area at Gigafactory Texas, as well as some of the sourcing that is needed for the lithium hydroxide for the 4680s battery cells. The proposed battery production area at Gigafactory Texas is about twice the size of the current trial facility in California, which is just down the road from Fremont. Large twin excavations are now present in the battery cell area, but I'm not exactly sure what the purposes will end up being for. Interior fit up of the paint shop is just starting, including delivery of the place and the large equipment that I noted in last week's podcast. GeoPair work is progressing in the northeast corner of the Megapad just ahead of the casting area, and progress is proceeding for the temporary switchyard, although at a much slower pace when compared to the general assembly of the Gigafactory itself. Precast concrete wall sections are continuing around the stamping plant, and bridge cranes are now de being delivered and installed on site in the casting area, and Joe Tegmeyer goes into some details about the sourcing of the bridge cranes, as well as their rated capacities. Well, that should pretty much do it for a relatively short episode 33. I must say that my recent visit to the Ottawa showroom and Model Y test drive has struck a chord with my listeners and even my family. There's a real excitement in our own little corner of the world, and I suspect that people can actually see for themselves the amount of passion that I have for advocating for change. It's something I've not seen in the last 33 weeks of working on this podcast, and it's that kind of excitement that keeps me working very hard to get into a Tesla of some sort. If you find any value to this podcast and you like the work that I do, I invite you to head on over to patreon.com slash how I got my Tesla once there. And if you'd like to support me a little bit financially towards a Tesla of some sort, there are three tiers available for you to choose from. With every donation received, please know that your contribution is greatly appreciated by me and my family. And guess what? My Patreon page is now indexed in the Patreon app. So you now you have two ways to check out my tiers of support. And if you're looking to purchase a Tesla and you want 1,000 free supercharging miles, feel free to use my referral program link in the show notes below or head on over to ts.la slash Matthew40942. Looks like the only person to, to use that code is chatty. So hashtag for this episode, let's try hashtag cyber living. And the overall hashtag for this podcast is hashtag HIGMT. And if you have any feedback for me, then you can throw me an email at howigotmytesla at gmail.com. And as always, you can watch my progress towards a Tesla of some sort by visiting howigotmytesla.com. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram by simply searching for How I Got My Tesla. And finally, you can look for me on Clubhouse, where I'll be hosting an informal chat about the topics covered this past week. So I invite you to share your thoughts and stories on all things Tesla. So thank you for listening. This podcast is produced by Matt Wilson and hosted by Squarespace. Music for this episode is Cascade by Cubby. Cubby.